Welcome to the Word with Bishop Hannah. This is your day for a breakthrough. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hi, I'm Bishop Hewlin A. Hanna, and welcome to another edition of The Word with Bishop Hewlin A. Hanna. I am so delighted, indeed humbled, to be in your presence, and I say to God be the glory, the great things he has, he is, and he will continue to do for his people. Isn't God amazing? It is already the first Sunday of June 2022, and look where God has brought us from. We have so much to be thankful for, but before we even get any further, we want to also think about the upcoming hurricane season. And you know that we have been experiencing very, very ferocious weather systems over the last few years, and we don't want to go down those roads anymore. But we have to pray and ask God to help us. But in addition to praying, we must do some things, also some very tangible things. And if you are listening and if you are viewing this segment, I want to encourage you to check your premises where you live. The structural soundness of your structure to make sure that anything that is likely to be airborne, and to become a missile that you either tie them down, you just take them away from your property altogether. Uh, Maybe you want to check to make sure that those windows are working so that when they close, they are really closed. And uh, you want to make sure that everything that is in order is in order because the worst time to prepare for a storm is during a storm. And uh, so we encourage you to do everything that you can to make sure that you are safe. And also, if you live in an area where there are indigent persons, old persons, and others who cannot fend for themselves or care for their own personal safety, perhaps you want to look in on them and to find out if they're okay. If you think about the horrific uh, floods we've been having earlier in the West and then, of course, in the East, and a lot of people have experienced severe stress as they watch their earthly goods being damaged by these torrential floods. And so please, please, I'm encouraging you, coupled with prayer, let's make sure that we do some tangible things to enable us to be safe during this time of the year. And now today we want to talk about this topic, wake up, it's a lie and a game. Wake up, that is become conscious, because it's a lie and a game. Hopefully, this will make sense to us and will cause us to understand that even in these times, God has a word for us, and God does not want us to be deceived by persons in our life, in our pathway. So wake up. It's a lie and a game. Life has a strange way of doing things to people. None of us is perfect. We make mistakes, missteps, And if we had to do it all over again, we would certainly do things differently. Many of us would be happy to have a second chance, a third chance, an opportunity just to make things better than they are or than they were. And of course, the results of these things would be far more desirable. And while this is the case with many persons, there are those who are content with the mindset that it is okay to gloss over things and simply move on with their lives. This leads me to examine the behavior of persons in the business of making others believe the incredible. They are able with tremendous success to persuade persons into believing that there are shortcuts in life and that we do not have to follow life's basic rules. This, unfortunately, has resulted in the gullible and I dare say lazy persons discovering to their shame and horror that there are no shortcuts in life. As believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are not exempt from these charlatans. They are all over the place. Sadly, 
I wish that I can tell you that their numbers will cease, but this is not supported by Scripture. Matthew 24, 3 through 5 says, And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, what shall these things, or when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered, take note now, and Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed, pay attention, that no man deceive you. Jesus is going to make sense of this. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. This is a very sad passage right here. It is sad because it is telling us that what we see now, in time to come, there will be a proliferation of these deceivers. So that makes it very sad. But there is also hope in the midst of this because no less a person than Jesus Christ himself is warning us that these persons will come upon us and they will come in his name. I want to say to someone right now listening to me, not everyone that name the name of Jesus Christ and that claim to come in the name of Jesus Christ is sent by God, is authentic, or have a message for you. Jesus said, in the latter times, these persons will come in his name and they will be bold enough to say, I am Christ. Not just saying, I'm coming in the name of Christ, but I am Christ. And they will be so cunning, so deceptive, that they shall deceive many. The disciples, having heard Jesus taught on the signs of the end time, were intrigued by all of what he was saying. And so they sought greater revelation from the Master. Jesus then, being the master teacher that he is, took the opportunity to warn them of the sinister plot of the enemy to deceive them and doom them to eternal alienation from God. And that is the bottom line that Satan has for everyone, to ultimately cause us to be destroyed. In fact, Jesus himself said, the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy his ultimate end game is to destroy everyone who named the name of Jesus Christ. And so when Jesus said then that what would happen in the last days, that resonates today, and it should resonate with everyone, whether you are a child of God or not, because these things will come. The, the passage continues, And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. This is Jesus speaking. This is not going to cease anytime soon. You are not going to see these numbers or these persons plateau anytime soon. Jesus said, And many false prophets shall rise, new persons, new personality, coming on with their aura of, of, of like a mega star and shall deceive many, and because iniquity or sin shall also be on the increase, the love of many shall wax cold. Jesus said, this is, I'm reading verses 11 through 13, Jesus says, But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. What is Jesus saying? It's rather simple, you know. Jesus is saying, despite the false prophets increasing, Despite those who will come and say that they are Christ, Jesus is saying, whatever happens in that time, in that interim, those that endure to the end, they shall be saved. It's not going to be a cakewalk. It's not going to be name it, claim it. It is going to be because we are being drawn closer to God in our walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to understand this. Many Christians live their Christian lives as if they're on vacation. They're under the shade, as they said, having lemonade. This Christianity, this life that God has called us to live through Jesus Christ, it's a tough walk. 
but fear not, because he, God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit will see us through. Listen to verse 13 again. But he that shall endure, taking the heat of the day, unto the end the same shall be saved. And so, let us then look at some of the lies that are being bandied about by the false prophets Jesus referred to. How about this one? They make promises of wealth. These persons prey on the greed of their adherents and promise them that they will be rich. You hear it all the time. Give us this money and you will get this. In seven days, this will happen. In 14 days, someone will pay off all your, all, all your bills. To be honest with you, I wish that was real. They back this stuff up by providing so-called proof of persons who have gained wealth, either sowing seeds or other acts of giving. The problem with this is that it feeds on the carnal desire of people who are out to get something for nothing. It was God who said to Adam that by the sweat of his brow, he will feed himself and by extension, his family. Genesis 3.19 says, and this is God now speaking to man, Adam, after man had breached God's laws. And God said to him, In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou shalt return unto the ground, for out of it was thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. There are no shortcuts in the passage I just read. Those who seek to tell us these fancy stories and their sidekicks, they are the only one getting rich. And sadly, it is generally at the expense or on the backs of covetous people. God can do all things. Please understand me. In his sovereign will, God can speak to dirt and dirt can become bread. God can speak to stones and stones can become the most scrump scrumptious meal. But the point that is being made here is that these persons who are promising you things, promising you wealth, outside of the scope of what God provided for us, these persons are on a quest to deceive the gullible. God will not cater to the flesh. Can I say it again? God will not cater to the flesh or to man's greed. Matthew 4, 9 and 10 says, And he said unto him, All these things, this is now Satan now, trying to give Jesus, the Son of God, a shortcut to wealth, but also to worship. Satan says to, to, to Jesus now, in Matthew 4, 9 to 10, All these things, well, I give unto thee. First mistake, he didn't own anything that he was offering Jesus. If thou wilt fall down and worship me. You see, you see what is happening there? I will give you things for worship. I will give you things for subservience. I am saying to us, in our haste to listen to people and to be easily susceptible to what these persons are saying, we must be careful that in the final analysis, we are not worshiping something that is other than God. Then said Jesus, now Jesus responding to Satan, Get thee hence. No negotiation, no discussion. Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Interesting, now watch this now. You can try to worship God but you cannot be worshiping God and serving things at the same time. Listen to it again. Get thee hence, Satan. Notice that Jesus identified the source. The source for this was purely from Satan. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God. Worship belongs to God and God only. If you're worshiping things, if you're worshiping people, if you're worshiping prestige and positions, you are out of order and you are to be rebuked in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen to it again. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve. You worship him and you serve him. How do you serve him? You serve him by living out the tenets of the word of God. This is how we serve God. Okay? So however... 
when we, when we, whenever he chooses, God, whenever God chooses to work miraculously in the lives of his children, it is always for his higher glory. In fact, let me put it like this. God does nothing. God does nothing for which he does not first get the glory and we are blessed as a result of it. Okay? So whenever God does something miraculously, it is for his higher glory. I call on you to think for a moment and ask yourself, all of these prophecies that people have been giving you, that you're going to be rich, your bills are going to be paid, you're going to have a car, you're going to have a beautiful mansion, you're going to have a palace. How long? How long? Ask yourself, how long do I wait for this wealth that was promised to me by these people? How long? Here's another thing, another lie, that is, and that is that everything will be all right and you will be spared earthly suffering. This, my brother, my sister, runs contrary to sacred scripture. Everything will eventually be all right. But as we live this life in Christ Jesus, there are some things that we have to be confronted with. I want to go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. And I want to use the word of God to, to bring this point here to us. 2 Timothy chapter 3. And I'm reading from verse 12 all the way down to verse 17. And I may make a little commentary here. Remember now, these people are telling you that everything is going to be all right. They make it almost a sin for you to have a headache, for you to have stress, for your car to have a flat tire. Listen to this. Yea, this is 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 12 to 17. Yea, and all they that would live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. That is the word of God. Verse 13, but evil men and the seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast, and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Listen to verse 15. And that from a child, this is stability now, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. And just in case they try to question the authenticity of sacred scripture, the inerrancy of God's word. Here's what verse 16 says. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. This is what God wants us to be about. We have to be careful then how people set us up for our own feelings to be crushed and for our understanding of God to be distorted. You will go through hardships in this life. Jesus was tempted in all points as you and I are, but he never sinned. We need to move to a point, beloved in Christ, where suffering is not necessarily associated with sin. It is not necessarily associated with lack of faith. I understand there are those preachers. I understand that even there are those expositors. How they do it, I do not know. But expositors of the word of God who attempt to make us feel as if because you are a Christian, you are not going to have a bad day. You are not going to have a bad experience. These are untruths. These are untruths. They are not biblically sound. These adverse, adverse circumstances that we go through, they come to refine us, to cause us to trust in God, to see God's ability to take us through. Remember what we said earlier? Him that endured to the end, the same shall be saved. God can take you through your red seas. God can take you through your fiery situations. In the name of Jesus Christ, do not allow slick talking and ignorant or naive people to abuse the word of God and to tell you something that this Bible is not saying. Praise you, Jesus. Now let's look at another sinister lie that is being um, told. And this one is perhaps more sinister than all of the deceptive games that are being played. 
And this is when a false prophet undertakes to speak for God. To speak for God. It goes something like this. I hear the Lord telling me. You heard that, right? Or you've been hearing him saying, the Lord told me to tell you. Or they would say, the Lord is showing me. Some would say, the Lord just dropped this in my spirit. God can do all of these things. But I want to speak against the backdrop of what we are talking about in this sermon. And that is persons who do these things to grab your attention. And the danger here, beloved, is that when we embark on this type of behavior or when we become susceptible to this kind of behavior, we potentially place those who we are telling these things to, we place them in a state of fear and or panic. In this state of fear or panic, they are moved to do whatever is being asked of them for fear that they will incur the wrath of God if they do not obey the commands of the prophet. That's kind of like the people who write these uh, chain letters, and they will say to you, well, you know, one person didn't send it, and this is what happened to that person. In the name of Jesus Christ, and as a man of God, I rebuke that lie in Jesus' name. How dare you tell a person that you're speaking for God when you know that God is not giving you, giving you a word. How dare you create fear and panic and pandemonium in somebody's life when you take on this posture and to say God told you to tell someone something. When it's only your feeling, when it's only your emotions, when you're only being led by something else. I say to you, my viewing audience, this is not how God works. Our sins place us under conviction. And uh, this conviction, which is brought on by the Holy Spirit, is the doorway to repentance. Here's what the Bible says to us in 2 Corinthians 7 and verse 10. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. What that passage is simply saying is this. When we repent, we are not, when we repent godly sorrow, we are not sorry for repenting on the basis of godly sorrow. But the sorrow of the world, listen to this, worketh death. Here's the same passage now, and this is this is this is Second Corinthians seven and ten. Here's the same passage being rendered now in the New Living Translation or the NLT. Here's what it says For the kind of sorrow God wants us to experience leads us away from sin and results in salvation. There's no regret for that kind of sorrow, but worldly sorrow, which lacks repentance, results in spiritual death. Here's what I'm saying again. Be careful of people who are telling you they are speaking for God. The Lord placed this in their spirit. The Lord placed you in their heart. The Lord placed you in their mind. God can do these things. But I'm saying not because someone is promulgating the name of God or of Jesus Christ. We should fall hook, line, and sinker for what we'll follow. Let's have discernment. Let's ask God to give us that extra ability to know when we're being taken down the river. As we wind the sermon down, let me reflect on some of the other prophecies that these persons bring to us. It is interesting. It is interesting, and I know what I'm going to say now is going to get me into crosshairs of many persons, but it is interesting that the majority of these prophecies are aimed at destroying the nation. They make you feel as if our nation, in this case, the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, and its citizens are God's worst children. There is hardly anything good or uplifting that they have to say about our nation. It's always God is going to destroy this country. God is going to destroy this. God is going to take the water and drown everyone. A hurricane is going to come and when it's left, only rocks will be standing. We understand that God is a God who punishes sin, whether they are national or personal. But we are also mindful 
that he is a God of grace and mercy. And I'm not giving no one any get out of jail card. I'm not saying it's okay to sin. I'm not trying to massage anybody's ego in sin and cause you to do more, more egregious things than you are already doing. No, no. We're trying to understand something here that God is a God of grace and mercy and our God is a God of long suffering. We understand that God is a God who wants his children through the gospel. Romans 6 and 23 says, For the wages of sin is death. That's on the extreme end. But listen to the other end of the continuum. On the continuum. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Listen to it again. The wages of sin, the pay, the consequence of sin is death. But simultaneously, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. I want eternal life. My message is to warn men and women to come to Jesus Christ so that they don't have to experience the wages of sin, which is death. Second Peter 3 and 8 says, or 3, 8 through 10 says, But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. That one day is with God as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness. Listen to, listen to the characteristic of, of God now. But is long suffering to us what? Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Men need to hear the word of repentance. They need to hear the gospel. Bless you, Jesus. The, the passage continues. But the day of the Lord, if you don't do what God has said, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are also therein shall be burned up. You cannot help but see that God's mercy and grace is always extended to man long before he moves to a place of punishment. This is our God. I want to read as much as I possibly can as we, as before we go to pray. First Peter chapter 4, and I want to read it from the NLT. I just have maybe two minutes or so. I want to read this, and then we're going to pray just a portion of this. This is to help us along with understanding that we need to wake up and understand that these things that people promise us, it's a joke, it's a gimmick, it's a game. Listen to what First Peter 4 tells us in the NLT. So then, since Christ suffered physical pain, you must arm yourselves with the same attitude he had and be ready to suffer, it says, or be ready to suffer too. For if he have suffered physically, for Christ, you are finished, or you are finished with sin, or you have finished sin. You won't spend the rest of your lives chasing down your own desires, but you will be anxious to do the will of God. You have had enough in the past of the evil things that godless people enjoy, their immorality and lust, their feasting and drunkenness and wild parties, and their terrible worship of idols. Of course, your former friends are surprised when you are no longer plunged or you're no longer plunging into the flood of wild and destructive things they do. So they slander you. But remember that they will have to face God who stands ready to judge everyone, both the living and the dead. This is First Peter 4, and I'm reading from the NLT. This is why the good news was preached to those who are now dead. So although they were destined to die like all people, they now live forever with God in the Spirit. Verse 7 says, The end of the world is coming soon. Therefore, be earnest and disciplined in your prayers. Most important of all, continue to show deep love for each other. For love covers a multitude of sin. Cheerfully share your home with those who who need a meal or a place to stay. In other words, this is, the, this is the flip side of these people who are telling you 
that everything is going to be all right. God is saying through Peter, this is the life of discipline and focused energy I want you to apply in these latter times. God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Do you have the gift of speaking? Then speak as though God himself was speaking through you. Do you have the gift of helping others? Do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies. Oh, praise God. Then everything you do will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. All glory and power to him forever. Amen. So let, let's just let's say one more little piece here. And if you have to suffer for being a Christian, and this is purely in response now to those who, to, who are telling you that everything is going to be all right. And trying to make you feel as if when you go through hardship that you're probably not a good Christian. Listen to what the passage, listen to what verse 14 of First Peter 4 says in, First Peter 4 says in the NLT. Dear friends, don't be surprised at the fiery trials you're going through as if something strange were happening to you. Instead, be very glad for these trials make you partners with Christ in his suffering so that you will have the wonderful joy of seeing his glory when it is revealed to all the world. If you are insulted because you bear the name of Christ, you will be blessed for the glorious spirit of God rests upon you. If you suffer, however, if you must not be or it must not be for murder, stealing, making trouble or prying into other people's affairs. But it is no shame to suffer for being a Christian. Praise God for the privilege of being called by his name. For the time has come for judgment and it must begin with God's household. And if judgment begins with us, what terrible fate awaits those, those who have never obeyed God's word? I'm going to stop right there. God bless us. God bless us today. And recognize that I'm not attacking anyone. But I'm ready, hoping that this word today would help us to understand and appreciate. If you're going to be rich, by, grace, by the grace of God, work. There are no shortcuts. Do not let people beguile you and tell you, don't mind all of this talk about suffering. You're going to be okay. It's not true. You're going to suffer. God is going to take you through a process. Let him take you through that process. There is joy. And I'm not being sadistic, but there is joy in God refining us. And finally, those who will tell you that they're speaking for God, beware, beware. They may not be speaking for God. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, your son, we thank you today that you are an awesome God and you speak to us through your word. You speak to us in our conscience. You speak to us by conviction. And we need not allow ourselves to become inundated and overwhelmed by those persons in our environment who through ignorance, through trickery, or whatever else may be their agenda, are trying to destroy our walk with you and our faith in you. Help us today to be a focused people, to serve you in spirit and in truth. And help us, Lord, to touch others in meaningful ways so that together we will grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I pray for those who are sick. I pray for those who do not know Jesus Christ as Savior, that they will be reconciled to you and that the joy of the Lord will become their strength. I thank you now, Father, in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen and amen. God bless you, beloved. Again, I'm Bishop Hugh and Hannah. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity to share this word with you. And we are looking forward again to being in your company again. And until then, share this word. And remember, wake up. It's a game. And it's a bag of tricks. God bless you.